Last night he had four fouls for the first time ever in a first half, and some are concerned he was flat out tired last night. Stephen A., how much was LeBron's rep hurt over the last two games? I think over the last two games, it was affected to some degree. Nobody's going to question the greatness of LeBron James, what he brings to the table in terms of his talents and his resume. That's not what I'm talking about. But we had gotten ourselves to a point where the ease with which he was putting his talents on display against the competition, leading into game three of the NBA final, Eastern Conference Finals versus the uh, Boston Celtics, you had yourself talking about him and MJ, him and the great being the greatest ever, him and ultimately, you know, how he's the greatest and everybody's shooting for him, et cetera, et cetera. There was very little conversation about what happened in Dallas years ago or some of the other moments where he appeared to wilt beneath the pressure and things of that nature. You found yourself asking questions now, what the hell is going on? What the hell happened? You remembered him on Game 5 in 2010 of the conference finals against the Boston Celtics and how he just looked out of it that particular moment. You remember the finals appearance in Game 4 against the Dallas Mavericks where he scored eight points and there started being some commentary about the worst performances in the career of LeBron James and how the narrative shouldn't be what people are trying to make it be. No one was even thinking about that stuff at all when it came to him prior to game three but it's amazing just two games two playoff games in an eastern conference finals you got everybody looking at him and saying okay who's going to show up in the finals once golden state is on the other is, is, the, is the opposition and nobody was asking that question until game three um his reputation only takes a hit um, from the haters who are looking for evidence to use against him to nitpick at his greatness. So, so in that respect, I suppose it affects his reputation, but not really, Stephen A., because the haters are going to use whatever evidence they can scrounge up out of context to try to argue against him anyway. I suppose if you want to say it affects his reputation, it is in comparison to Michael Jordan who whatever everyone has missed shots and lost games and has had bad games in the playoffs, even Jordan, a very, very few. Um, but Jordan never gave you the sense that he needed a teammate to give him some heart, right? He never gave you that sense that he didn't want it at the very end of a game. He certainly never choked away four consecutive fourth quarters in the finals as LeBron did, and so LeBron has to live that down constantly. Um, so, yes, compared to Jordan, the greatest who ever did it, and LeBron has admitted that that's the ghost he's chasing. Yes, it hurts his reputation in that comparison, but that's all. That's the, that's the only way in which it really hurts him. The haters were going to hate anyway. Um, and even when he had this awful game, he was huge in the fourth quarter. Huge. And wound up 34, I'll say it again, 6-5 and five on better than 50% shooting from the floor in a win in which he was plus 7 while he was on the court. That's a game you want to use as evidence against his greatness? Okay. Magic Johnson, called Tragic Johnson, not just for running his coach out of town, but because he choked away the 1984 finals, right? It, listen, Magic choked. Um, Kobe Bryant, that series against Phoenix, they're up 3-1. All of a sudden it's 3-3, and everyone's saying Kobe needs to pass more, so he makes a big display of that in Game 7. Uh, in the playoffs, oh, you want me to pass? Here's a nice bounce pass. See, see how far you get without me scoring. They lost the series. You know, you can nitpick at all the greats if you want to uh, and, and find things that are wrong with them and use evidence against them. And some of it's legitimate because when you're comparing the greatest of all time to each other, you have to start splitting hairs. But where, as you split those hairs, what you will find is including the last two games, the only guy who's clearly better is Jordan, and LeBron has a case, probably a winning one, against any other non-big in history, and maybe even with the bigs too. So does his reputation take a hit for, for dropping 34 points on better than 50% shooting from the field in a win in the playoffs? I guess, and that actually says more about his greatness than anything else, doesn't it? Well, again, you look at it that way, but as usual, you look at stuff half-heartedly because you got your little micro portion of things that you're going to look at, and you try to act like it's a macro perspective, but it's the really not. The fact, the, 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 the fact of the matter is, is that when you look at LeBron James, no one's disputing what you're saying overall. 
But as these finals get ready to approach, you're dissecting things because there are things that you're looking for from him that in your eyes you may not have seen before. And it's not just the haters. There's a lot of guys that got a lot of love for LeBron, but also still dissect and pick apart certain things because they're looking for that extra something that they may not have seen from him before to cement what most already feel about him and have said about him. When you've got the Golden State Warriors coming up, here's the reality. You can give me those 34 points all you want to last night. I ask one simple question, Max Kellerman. If LeBron James played the exact same way from start to finish for last night, is that good enough to beat the Warriors? That no. answer is no. But... And that's a, but that's the What's point. What's the real issue with LeBron is people say he has this incredible game and they don't like the fact that he doesn't want the ball to score it in the final seconds. So then last night he has a monster fourth quarter. Oh, I thought that's when you needed to see that stuff. A monster fourth quarter and they win. Right. And now it's well in the first half he was he wasn't good because he was in foul trouble. You well, know, it wasn't, but it wasn't just but it wasn't just that it was the first half. It was the fact that once Kyrie took over yeah, and sure. Cleveland reclaimed the lead, all of a sudden that's when he really poured it on again. Again, nobody's questioning the greatness of LeBron James. I'm simply saying I anticipate we all expect wholeheartedly quickly, that LeBron James and Cleveland are going to beat Boston. Quickly, it's a measuring him against Golden State. Part of what the press does is behave critically. Once upon a time in the press, before the kind of revolution in the press, uh, um, uh, you know, in the 1960s or so, it start, really started where journalists started looking critically at players, not simply lionizing them in the press, right? Okay, I understand that. And with okay, that came this accurate. idea that you have a lot of, the athletes feel that the negative stuff comes out all the time because we're looking for interesting stuff to talk about and write about and sell as a story. And if it's always just, oh, they're so great, it's kind of boring. And once upon a time, Magic Johnson dropped 42 points jumping at center, a point guard, as a 20-year-old rookie to win the mm -hmm. finals and finals MVP and still after that, after winning two finals, was roundly criticized in the press and vilified because he choked in 1984, as I mentioned earlier. So the point is this is not unique to LeBron. But I do think it's absurd Hold that on. after the last two finals we've seen from LeBron, a game in which he just, they, they won and he had actually a big game by the end, we're using that as evidence but, but, against but, 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 but him. Listen, 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 listen. First, first of all, just because you want to intellectualize and dissect things that way, but be real and be fair to your contemporaries in this very business. People don't always say something because they're looking for a headline or they're looking for something interesting to talk about. They actually feel that way. I know that when I watch LeBron, I'm not sitting here looking for some damn headline or whatever the case may be to talk about. That's how I feel. Sure. As I'm watching Golden State, as I'm watching LeBron, this is what I'm thinking about because I'm disregarding Boston. Because I'm expecting them to lose. I'm looking at LeBron and I'm measuring him against the greatest team in basketball right. right now, which is Golden State and asking, do. is that good enough? There's nothing wrong with that. You do, and, and successful people in this business, for example, you, will find, will, will reflect what you're actually feeling. And because others okay. are also feeling it, they know what you mean. They identify with the emotion that you've identified with, and we talk about it. And there's no question that that's what we were all feeling, particularly until Kyrie took the game over yesterday. My point is mm -hmm. we're essentially comparing LeBron to a standard of perfection. And when he falls short, we, we jump on him and say, is this going to affect his reputation? If the point is he's perfect, then yes, it'll affect him negatively because he's not. But he's closer to perfect than almost anyone who ever played the game. Okay. With you on that one. Meanwhile, guys, the Warriors did something that has never been done, entering the finals 12-0, but Draymond Green isn't buying.